10194 in the name of Joe Fitzpatrick be agreed to? Are we all agreed? The motion is therefore agreed to. The next item of business is topical questions. Question one, Rod Campbell. Uh, to ask the Scottish Government what steps it is taking to address the matters raised in the Mental Welfare Commission for Scotland report, Dignity and Respect, Dementia, Continuing Care Visits. Minister Michael Mathis. I welcome the Mental Welfare Commission's report into Dementia Continuing Care Wards, which shows that the level and quality of care and support is in many cases not meeting the standard we expect. While we are making significant progress in many areas of dementia care, such as diagnostic rates, post-diagnostic support and acute hospital care, it is essential that people with dementia receive safe, effective and high-quality care at all stages of their illness and in all care settings, at home, in hospital or in a residential care setting. The dementia standards published in 2011 are clear that everyone has a human right to this level of care and that we are continuing our national approach to workforce development and education to support services to meet these standards. Nationally, action is underway on a, a range of areas to address many of the issues highlighted in this report, particularly through national commitment, uh, commitments to improve care in specialist NHS care facilities and to reduce the inappropriate prescribing of psychotropic medication for people with dementia. We will work with the Mental Welfare Commission, Alzheimer's Scotland and others to carefully but rapidly consider other matters highlighted by the report and to develop an action plan. The report reminds us all that dementia is one of our foremost public health and societal challenges, now and in the future. The integration of health and social care will enable more people with advanced dementia and more complex care needs to live well in their own homes for longer and less than the reliance on long-term care in specialised and continuing care units. We will work with services across Scotland to support this aim. Lord Campbell. I thank the Minister for that answer. Um, Scotland's National Dementia Strategy uh, has Commitment 11 uh, dealing with the extension of the quality of care found in general hospitals to other NHS settings and Commitment 13 about finalising and implementing a national commitment to the prescribing of psychotropic medications. The MWC report raises major concerns about the prescription of psychotropic drugs without a regular review. Can the Minister advise what steps will be taken to ensure that both Commitments 11 and 13 are being complied with? Minister. Uh, the member made uh, particular reference to two of the commitments which are set out in the National Dementia Strategy, Commitment 11 and Commitment uh, 13. There is already a, a body of work being taken forward in relation to Commitment 11, which is focusing on improving the way in which the dementia standards are being applied within our uh, acute hospital uh, setting, particularly those uh, NHS wards and units where they have a, a key function in providing uh, assessment and care and treatment to people with uh, uh, dementia. Uh, the intention was that after that area of work had been completed was to then roll that out further uh, to such uh, non-acute hospital settings such as continuing care units uh, often contained within community hospitals. So we are looking to consider how we can speed up that process in order to move that into the continuing care setting that has been highlighted uh, by the Mental Welfare Commission uh, report and we will consider how that can be taken forward as part of the action plan responding to this report. In relation to commitment uh, 13, uh, as the strategy sets out very clearly, there is a need to reduce unnecessary use of uh, medication in all care settings uh, and that medication should also be regularly uh, reviewed and updated. The Dementia Strategy Implementation and Monitoring Group at their uh, most recent meeting uh, we are considering how they can take forward Commitment 13 and have agreed on the approach that should be taken forward in order to implement this uh, uh, aspect of the strategy. Uh, what we will now do is work with uh, and liaise with the Mental Welfare Commission, Alzheimer's Scotland uh, and uh, others uh, in order to look at how we can make sure that this commitment is implemented as quickly as possible so that we can be assured that individuals who are receiving medication are receiving so in an appropriate way that it's regularly reviewed and that it is also properly recorded. But alongside that, in the action plan, I want to look at what further action we can take in order to make sure that there is sufficient work being taken forward to introduce further activities which can reduce the need 
for medication for individuals in such settings. So I hope that reassures the member that there's already work started on taking forward these commitments and we intend to look at how we can press them further ahead in order to speed up the process of their implementation. Lord Campbell. Uh, I thank the Minister for that answer. The review also refers to a disparity in the provision of continuing care beds across Scotland's NHS boards. Uh, what can the Minister tell us about how the Government proposes to at attack that disparity? Well, there uh, will be a difference between different NHS boards on the number of continuing care beds they have. Uh, that can be for a variety of reasons. So, for example, uh, a particular health board that has a, a greater focus on uh, supporting and the provision of care within the home setting, uh, within the community setting, may not necessarily have as many continuing care beds as in our local or in our health board area that has a greater focus on uh, inpatient or residential uh, beds. So there can be a variety of reasons as to why there can be such a disparity. But the member will be aware uh, that fairly recently the Cabinet Secretary for Health and Wellbeing uh, made a statement to Parliament setting out uh, future plans for care provision in Scotland. And part of that uh, also includes looking at the level of continuing care beds we have in Scotland and also the policy for the provision of continuing care beds in Scotland. And work is presently ongoing in developing the guidance in this area uh, and also in looking at the specific amounts of continuing care beds we have in Scotland. And once that process is being completed, we'll then be able to uh, set out the national approach to the provision of continuing care beds in NHS boards across the country. Richard Simpson. officer. I think welcome the detail that uh, the Minister has given on a number of aspects of this very worrying report from the Mental Welfare Commission, uh, which is indeed almost as bad as, in some areas as the Bridge End report in Wales, which led to significant action by the Welsh Assembly. Can I ask him, uh, he's given detail on a couple of issues, uh, but there are so many other issues in this report. Can I press him to actually accept that the government should provide time for a full debate so that we can look at the things that are not going right, given that Scotland is ahead, and I acknowledge this in terms of dementia standards, early diagnosis and early support, but clearly in terms of the most severe cases, we have very severe problems as are illustrated by this report, and we do need to have a full debate on this. One last point is I think that my reading of this report, Minister, is that the care inspectorate would frankly have closed some of these units if it had been the care inspectorate doing this report. And others, they would have said there should be no further admissions until the situation has been approved. We do not yet have an adequate ongoing inspection system. Four years between reviews by the Mental Welfare Commission are not enough. Minister. Okay, I, think, uh, I do recognise the member acknowledging that Scotland is ahead on the way in which it delivers uh, dementia care uh, broadly, but this report highlights an area where there is a significant area for improvement and further action. Um, as I mentioned uh, in my response to Roderick Campbell, is that um, I have asked officials to develop an action plan specific to the recommendations that have been set out in this report. Of the 20 recommendations, there are three specific to the Scottish Government. We accept all of those uh, recommendations. But what I also want to do is not only have an action plan, but also a monitoring and implementation uh, approach to taking it forward to ensure that this work is driven forward at a local level where delivery bodies have a responsibility to do that. I hope to have that action plan by the end of this month. And it may be at that point that would be an appropriate opportunity to consider uh, a full debate on this matter. And I'm more than happy to take away uh, the member's reference uh, to that. Uh, can I also say that in the issue about um, uh, the inspection regime in this, uh, in this issue, one of the things I think that this report does highlight is that um, many of the carers who were interviewed, uh, actually a vast majority of the carers who were interviewed, were satisfied with the care which was being provided to their relatives. That, to me, uh, sends out a signal that there are issues about the expectations that relatives actually have about the care that's being provided to their relatives. And I want to give consideration as to how we can address that type of issue, because it's clear there's a number of the units who are not providing care of an adequate standard and their carers should have been aware of that, and if so, able to alert, alert the appropriate agencies to consider these matters. So I think we have to consider in the round about how we can make sure that carers are better informed about what they should expect for their relatives and the care that's provided to them as well. Jim Hugh. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. When the Scottish Government published its National Dementia Strategy in 2010, it promised to adopt the principles of the Charter of Rights produced by the cross-party group on dementia. Does the Minister agree with me that this report demonstrates a failure to adhere to this Charter, particularly with regards to the accountability and empowerment principles, 
then the fact that most dementia sufferers are going for longer than a month without getting fresh air is a disgrace, of course, and that's simply not enough staff are receiving enough dementia-specific training. Minister. Um, the report uh, clearly highlights a number of areas where the level of care and the way in which the care has been delivered to uh, individuals with uh, uh, dementia has been unacceptable, and there have been some basic standards of care which are uh, not to be tolerated. Uh, the 2010 <coughs> strategy uh, set out the broad areas where we wanted to see improvements, including uh, signing up to the rights-based approach. And as I mentioned in my open response, I believe this is an issue of human rights for the individuals concerned, uh, particularly in areas where they are being prescribed medication that may be inappropriate. That is an issue of human rights that have to be addressed. Uh, and the updated strategy we published last year looks to drive that whole agenda uh, further forward. What we uh, do recognise is that there has been a broad improvement in the way in which uh, services are delivered in Scotland for individuals with dementia. As Richard Simpson correctly said, Scotland is seen as being world leading in a range of areas around how it delivers uh, dementia care. But in these areas where there have been deficiencies identified, what we now need to do is make sure that we take appropriate action to deal with it robustly and to deal with it as swiftly as we can. And the action plan I have requested that officials bring forward is intending to drive that forward and to monitor how that is then effectively implemented across the country. Thank you. Uh, that ends topical questions. The next slide of business.